If you're among the group of six or seven people who have seen my other videos, you will know by now that I'm very much into old computers. When this little amateur channel turned two, I made a video showcasing a bunch of them. My collection doesn't really follow a specific theme. I have IBMs, Commodores, Ataris and other basic computers, MS-DOS and other OSs. Well, I'm afraid that I'm branching out my collection, thanks to a Dutch YouTube channel that I have started watching. Root's Hangout, it is called, and on this channel Root makes very interesting and short videos about Dutch telecommunications. Let me show you two quick clips. The channel is in Dutch, but I added some freely interpreted subtitles. For uh, niet openbare ruimtes, dus niet voor in een telefooncel, want dan wordt die natuurlijk meteen gesloopt. Want het is gewoon van plastic. Nee, het was meer voor uh, een café. Hij heeft waarschijnlijk gestaan bij een of ander garage of bij een, een of ander oliebedrijf of zo. His video sparked something in me wanting to tinker with some old phones. <laughs> I already have one old phone. In a very old video I showed off my T65 phone, which I cleaned and tried to hook up to my power supply to make it ring, which did not work. Let's see if we can be a little bit more successful in this video. I know there are devices out there you can get to make the phones ring and even use them with your modern day mobile phone via Bluetooth. A great example of this is the X-Link BT2. It lists all its features on its website. Features like beautiful modern design, which is debatable in my opinion, and compatible with all phones. It also had a video on the website. Let's take a look. When your cell phone rings, all connected telephones will also ring. Simply answer the phone as usual. Antique and rotary telephones are fully supported. A great device, which I would love to have. Something that the AI spies also noticed. So I got some emails of the product being advertised to me, like this nice offer I got from Amazon. Only 421.92. What a steal. Anyways, I managed to find one on the Dutch version of eBay. For not too much. Well, not too reasonable though, let's say an okay price. Here it is. I'm surprised how small it is. Luckily it still has all the original packaging. Let's open it up. A couple booklets and an American style power supply, which I will substitute with an European style one. It uses a pretty common voltage, so it will be easy to replace. I quickly tested it with this phone I got from a thrift store in combination with a plug I picked up. It works. Well, I picked up a whole bunch of old phone related stuff. Let me show you what I found. Starting with an other T65, for a decent price. Not too interested in those newer office phones. A push button style T65, to which we refer to as TDK in the Netherlands. Oh, and at this shop they also sold a bunch of Wii power supplies. I got a stack of Wiis recently to tinker with, so I took a couple, which will come in handy probably. Then I moved to another store which has weird pricing. They are always either very expensive or very cheap. So the old T65s were a bit too expensive in my opinion. But the other phones were all priced around €2.50, which is okay. Oh, and I was really tempted by this Novatel car phone slash mobile phone device, but not for now. Let's make an agreement that if it's still here the next time I will get it. So let me display all the phones I got on my old phone hunt. Pretty nice batch I have to say. So here they are, nine of them. A T88 from around 1986, one with a difficult name, Lausanne or something. The Basil from around 1990, a Vox 120 from around 1987, a pretty hefty Bordeaux 20, a Bari 10, which is branded with the newer KPN logo, my first T65, the one with the push buttons, and the other one with the rotary dial. Well, the X-Link turns out to be a bit of an expensive way of testing these old types of phones. Turns out, on the Dutch version of eBay, you can even get some equipment for free, which gives you the ability to test them. They are called Quattrofox. More on them in a minute. First, I want to service some of them. I attached the plug to the back of my T65, then I cleaned this phone, which was uh, pretty grimy. As you can see when I put the horn closer. I washed it in the sink with some soapy water. The sticker survived this. Then I removed the keypad and cleaned the keys and horn. 
and reassembled the whole thing. Back to the Quattrofoxen. This box I got from someone who offered them up for free on the Dutch version of eBay. I'm not interested in it all, but we'll give that stuff to a thrift store. This is the Quattrofox 1, which has an interesting serial port that I want to maybe try in a different video. If it is exciting enough, of course. <laughs> I know excitement and old phone is a niche market. What also makes this Fox nice is the fact that it has RG11 ports. Something related to ISDN, a network switch, which will go to a thrift store. And a small Quattrofox 5. Also I got this other Fox which was very cheap. This one has terminals you can connect the phone wires to. So I cut up some of the cables I got from the thrift stores earlier and started messing with the Fox. It works as the lights indicate the horn of the phone being picked up. A hassle to connect all those little wires. I swapped out this label for something more suitable. So let's move over and start hooking up some of the phones. It works! I think the best way to refer to these devices is to call them phone switches, or like exchanges. I'm new to this, so forgive me when I get some of the terminology wrong. So let's pick up the phone and start dialing some single digit numbers. Finally, it rings, and much louder. I would call this an annoying sound, although I do associate the sound of the T65 with my wake-up alarm. A bit more nice. I hooked up the Fox 5 to the other phone. I wish I could make a quick remix with this, but sadly I lack the musical skills. Not to forget the Fox 120, something that I cannot do with the Foxes, but what I can do with the BT2 is test the sound quality. Well, sort of. I had to raise the levels of all the recordings by about 12 decibels. This is a sound test of the T65 with the numpad, not the rotary dial. want to try all phones that I just bought, so sit in there because this is going to take a while, because I have a bunch of phones I want to give a quick sound test. So this is what the Bordeaux 20 sounds like. Is there any difference with the T65? I think there probably will be. And this is what the phone with that weird name sounds like. This is what the T88 sounds like. For two euros fifty, I think that this is pretty decent quality and back in the day this might have sounded even good. This is what the Bari 10 sounds like with its nicely ugly cable. This is what my first T65 sounds like. This is actually the first phone, of course, that I added to my new collection of old phones. This is what the Fox 120 sounds like. This is what the... Basil sounds like. And I can hear a bunch of interference, so I wonder if that's coming through on this recording. The Basil is a good moment to test the functionality of the BT2. So when I dial the phone number, it will call it via my mobile phone, although it takes a second. There's no record of this number. Sadly, this number is not available. Almost forgot that T65. This is what my other um, T65 
it sounds like. At the store where I also got the Wii power supplies, I got this answering machine. Nifty little device that I have now put in service to save me some time. Thank you for calling the retro mail and the video hotline. Second, we cannot answer your phone call at this moment. This does not mean that your phone call doesn't mean anything to us. But we are wrapping up this video on my new obsession that was inspired by a very Dutch but very nice YouTube channel. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Let you know that I find that this uh, video is taking uh, way too long. Okay.